welcome to Bloom in Full Color, where we live life in high definition. Um, so, officially Jennifer Ross, I've got Dave Holly with me, and Adam Thompson. So, welcome to the new year. I know we're into February-ish, about the time this is going to be released. Now, a lot of people right now, what are you getting in the mailbox that you're getting really excited about? Seed catalogs. <laughs> Seed catalogs no. is the answer. What Not are you me. getting? I'm are getting, getting Medicare. Oh, uh, oh, nice. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's, that. yeah, nice that's the... That is checking a box. I totally understand that. I know I do not qualify yet. What are you getting in the mailbox that you get excited about? Nothing. Oh. My, I have a Joker moment like every time. With my like, sad oh. mailbox. <laughs> no one cares about me. My, but... my husband's been on these auction sites where he like bids for the Redskin stuff or the Washington <laughs> Commanders, whatever you want to call it. And it's yeah. like, it's like gambling without the reward. It's dumb. But then I'll come home and there's like five packages. He's like, oh. He feels like it's Christmas every day. He's like, yeah. I feel like you with Amazon packages. Yeah. I'm like, don't personally you attack me, to first off. <laughs> <laughs> Second off, good for you. And how much did that cost? Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I got my burpee catalog on my desk Ooh. this week. And so now it's like, okay, what tomatoes am I trying? So what have you seen with home gardeners and their successes or fails with seed starting? And how do we set up the home gardener for success with their seed starting? So who wants to start off? Well, there is more to gardening than just going out to the garden center. And we love people to come out to the oh, garden center, you know, but there's a lot of people that want to get started early. Well, so how do you get started early? And that's by and starting your if, seed. What so if you can't find the tomato variety absolutely. you want at the garden center? So there's, there's a lot of steps that you need to take. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So in January, you should be going through these seed catalogs and making sure uh, at, at this criteria. Is it something that you're going to eat? Okay. Is it something that you can grow easily? Or is this something that's cheap enough that you could buy at the supermarket so you don't have to worry about it? Yeah, that's okay? the truth. And, and, that right? is, and that's, that's one of the key things. Why am I going to go through all this process to grow, for me, beets or something? Okay. Where you can go to the store and pick them up relatively inexpensive. Okay. Concentrate on those items that you're going to eat. And that you can't find or source locally and get that seed in here. Yeah. Well, and I would say, all right, how do you know what you want to buy? So the first thing I would say, if you were wondering what we were growing, you go to our website, go to our catalog mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my gosh, they don't have Cherokee purple tomato. I better get some Cherokee purple seeds. But can our retail customers go to access our catalog? Online. Yes. Yep. They can. Oh, there you go. Yep. No problem there. Public. We we've made sure of that. Okay. Um, we want you to have the. I mean, also this could be. Hey, I'm really in love with this one nasturtium that I like to serve on a salad at Easter. Like something silly. Mm. Like it's this is a gardening nerd's dream and a cook's dream. Like this is me, and not everybody's my level of nerd. <laughs> there <laughs> now you care about a perennial and I don't. That's that that like roses. I'm a rose hater. I know that. I'm okay with that. It does not bother me at all. It bothers me. That's fair. <laughs> I love roses too. So uh, you don't uh, like yeah. roses. Okay, so I grew up in the country a half mile. Well, no, actually, I grew up in the parking lot here. So every time they cut the alfalfa, all the aphids would come to the yeah, roses, and so yeah. roses became this crutch. And like I remember when we used to bring in Jackson Perkin roses, mm -hmm. the brand that was like mm -hmm. everybody was known for, and those big, huge hybrid teas and. The Rose Society would come from the Vegas show straight to Moss Greenhouses and like pillager selection. And I'd get to see the Rose judging book from all these Rose nerds. And <laughs> okay, I okay. mean, so I've seen you have a kind jaded of all storyline. I, I, yeah. Well, I also hate geraniums and poppies because of having to clean them since <laughs> I was yay high. So, like, <laughs> I'm the wrong person to answer yes, that question. Yes, you are, question. apparently. Those like, are all my favorites. Yep. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh. And I, I'm like, osteostripes? That sounds cool. Like, no. I want to do okay. weird stuff. We're just but the opposite. That's fine. That's, that's okay. Great. Maybe that's, that's why we're a good team. <laughs> exactly. I'll chalk it so, up to that. Yeah. Well, and when I think of home gardeners growing seeds, I think of all my friends who are like, oh, I started my tomatoes on January 1st oh. and they're this big and they're yep. touching the window yep. on my kitchen table and it's March 1st. What do I do? And I'm well, like, throw them away yeah, absolutely. and start over. This is what this is why there's, there's so much planning that goes into yes. starting seeds at home. Okay. <laughs> You've got to know when your last frost date is for the most part and then absolutely. calculate backwards. So what is it's, our last okay. frost date? Lucy. May 15th. 
Technically. Although Technically. the USDA Technically. just yeah. kind of rearranged mm. things a little bit. I don't know if I buy it, but... I don't either. May so 15th is what we plan for. We will officially say at Moss Greenhouses, <coughs> we qualify us and what we recommend for the success of your garden. We are a zone five in our minds, not officially according to Sunset or right. USDA. Right. We recognize that. But in order for a perennial to seed, succeed in any of our gardens or on our properties, we find success at a zone five or lower. Mm -hmm. So that is just what we recommend now. That does not uh, uh, account for winter kill, um, rodents, <laughs> poor, poor soil or yeah. any of that. So, And those are all different conversations in which we would actually recommend you talk to the University of Idaho Extension and have Master Gardener out yep. for free. Because they get volunteer hours for that, mm -hmm. and they would guide you through that. So I will say that Andy West and his team over the University of Idaho Extension do a great job. So that's so yeah, take a look at your at your frost date and when you're going to put these plants in your garden. Okay, if you're planting them in January, so you're going to have. I'm going to play devil's advocate tall. then. I always always plant my tomatoes unless there's snow on the ground, in which case I might still consider it on Mother's Day week. Okay. And are that's you, always before. Are the you planting them in the ground or are you seed starting at that point? I am planting them in the okay. ground. All right. So they've and already been I am starting with a large plant. Yep. I am not starting with a four inch or right. a 1204 pack. I am starting right. with one gallon and getting ahead of it because the thing you need to know on vegetables, the the dates. So if it is a 60 day tomato, that is start into the ground. Correct. That is the start of Correct. the 60 days, not when you start the seed. Correct. Okay, so Adam, what would you guide a customer in retail that comes in, it's Mar It's the very first week we open, they're like, man, you have like three of the tomatoes I'm in love with on your seed thing. Um, how do I, what do I do? Where do I start? Uh, yeah, you could probably still do tomatoes in March. Um, where do you start? You start with your container, I guess, um, whether that's milk jugs or recycled flats from your crazy gardening habit. Or Dixie plastic cups. Uh, I've done Dixie cups. I've done egg cartons. I don't recommend either of those. Okay. They disintegrate if you have anything longer than like a 20, 30 day crop um, and they dry okay. out really fast. So okay. you want something. I never recommend plastic, but I'm going to here. <laughs> Uh, plastic is better. It conserves moisture. And that is the most important element of seed starting is retaining humidity and moisture constantly. And, consistent. Consistent. and also not too much. There's a balance there. But I always tell people, plastic. remember that roots, once you have them, you have to have the roots. Sure. So we need to establish that. Once you have roots, roots need as much air as they do water. Yes. But they can't dry down too much. And you have to look at the plant. <clears throat> it will communicate with you if you're paying attention. Which I guess goes to step two, right? You've got your container. <clears throat> you need some sort of dome. If you're starting seeds, you need to retain 70 to 100% humidity until it's opened up into its true leaves. Yep. Um, so true your next step true is True leaves soil. are not the first two either. The no, next those one. are your seed leaves. Yep. Cotyledons. <laughs> You want to get into it? <laughs> um, well, we see true leaves and some people are like, oh, I see leaves. Those are the true leaves. And it's nope. like, no, it's the next yeah. set. Leave your dome on yeah, <laughs> for leave that your... time. That's the just, yeah. hey, I'm alive leaf. Yes. It's the next one that comes up after that that's yeah. the true leaf. And all it needs to get to that point is water. All of that whole leaf set is inside the seed. All the nutrient to get it there, to get its roots, it's all there. Okay. The true leaf is when it starts really actually photosynthesizing. Okay. And absorbing moisture from the soil and nutrient as well. Mm -hmm. So that's when... It's a step to call it mature, but that's when you can kind of ease off on your um, helicopter mommy. So, <laughs> so if, if you're planting these these seedlings, if, if you're buying them from us early before you can put them out, or if you are starting from seed, you need to identify, of course, when you're going to go out yes. and then backtrack about six weeks. Okay. Yeah. So if you're going to go out May 15th, you're really going to start right around April on a seed start. Now, Depending We're going to have, crop. depending on the crop, absolutely. Yeah, depending yeah, on, depending the crop. on the crop. I'm talking vegetables in general. Yeah. Okay. So tomatoes, we should qualify uh, that. peppers, you know, things like yeah. that, where you're going to get a good growth on there. Okay. And then even if you're buying a, a pack from us before it's too early and, and we're going to probably have tomatoes. March 15th. Yeah. March 15th into yep. March, first part of April, they need to be protected, <laughs> you know, in your, in your home or garage uh, with your lights and the whole thing. It's more than just say, 
putting them on the windowsill, which I don't recommend at all. So we were, Adam and I were talking about this a couple days ago. What is the proper lighting? Not your kitchen window. No, not your kitchen window. You need direct overhead light. Yes. You can get away with the kitchen window if it's south facing and you rotate that flat. Every day. Every few days, at least, <laughs> maybe every day, but or at least the pot. You're gonna Just get some like lean towards the window, and you can counter it by. Well, you're gonna get stretch. Yes. So the plant's gonna go up and over, because if the light's overhead, so those who are listening to me can't see, I'm creating a T <laughs> with my hands. So the plant is here. If the light is here, it's gonna grow towards the light. Well, if the light's over here, the plant's gonna grow towards right. the light. So. You have to rec- you have to recognize that now. How do you keep it short? Really well lighting. Yeah, that, that's 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 the key on that. And indoor gardening is not your father's garden center no. type thing anymore. Okay, it, it's it's so advanced. You can get your LED lights that will fit a four foot table or a three foot table, and you're getting those lights directly above the you plants. Just, okay. You can get this at your local garden center, Absolutely. Home Depot, Lowe's. You could probably find it at you know Freddy's. You could you get it on Amazon. Yeah, get those little LEDs domes. are incredibly easy to find in all and shapes and sizes. And you can get the whole setup if you want to do a whole setup in your in your uh, basement or garage. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you can get the tables. You can get the lights. Okay. You've in got some a whole instances, setup in your garage of hydroponics. In the my day, in my basement. Yeah, in your basement. Is that where it's at now? Mm-hmm. Okay, I can't keep track. Yeah. You've also got two houses. So yeah. Like it's complicated. <laughs> so um yeah, there there's just a lot you can do. And it's it's you know, can I plug a uh website? You can, you can plug whatever. Okay, you so want. we don't sell uh these types of things here. Okay. You can get a lot of your seed starter kits and things like that at uh, some of our customers like D and B, Ridley's, um, and our, a lot of our independents. But if you're going to go online, check out gardenersupply.com. Yeah, oh, they're not one. bad at Gardner all. Gardner Distributors yep. uh, Supply. You can get everything you want there as far as setup. And for a couple hundred dollars, you've got a complete setup with lights, the, They've the got plastic, this, the whole this wood, <clears throat> just sexy raised garden yep. that I have my eye on. It's like two <laughs> or three hundred bucks, and I want it as like a kitchen outside herb garden that'll be like front of mind for me. I don't have the time for that, but every time I look at it, every spring I look at it, I just haven't pulled the trigger. One of these Does days. it have the cover? A dome? I don't remember. Get one with a dome. So, Adam, you brought up okay. the point of of keeping them moist. What happens in your indoor gardening when? Uh, you lose that humidity or you're not keeping your plants moist? Uh, They wilt out. I mean, they die. Or at least some of them, especially on your edges, your corners. Um, And it stunts their growth as well. So, yeah, it's it's really important until that true leaf phase. When they're at that point, their, their biology is balanced enough they can kind of deal with room, atmospheric moisture, you know. And typically, if you've got anything with a dome, I recommend kind of cracking it for a week and not doing a full exposure, taking that all off at once and give it, because I mean, what are we talking? Acclimated a little bit. I think our indoor humidity is like 15% ish. (laughs) So you're going from 70% to 15%. That's a shock for even a human being, let alone a plant in that stage so i kind of crack my dome or like a lot a lot of the time i use cellophane and i'm not gonna lie like popsicle sticks Mm -hmm. Um, and masking tape i mean i'm pretty basic but and so i'll crack it a little bit one week wait a few days crack it a little more and at this stage you really shouldn't be watering your plants either there really should if you watered incorrectly there should be enough moisture in there to and you're just to carry it through yeah you're really just monitoring you don't want your your plants to be leaning up against the dome like the saran wrap because then they kind of get some fungal problems. Right. They get they rot out, which is fatal at that stage. Um, and remember, if you have this by a doorway or a window or a vent where there's airflow, this is going to affect your moisture levels. This is going to affect your yes. humidity. So you have to factor for any kind of environmental controls. Yes. So I'm a I'm a brand new gardener. I really want to get started on growing my plants at home. Okay. I mean, all the benefits, of course, of of growing your own plants, uh, getting your children and things like that involved too is is pretty cool. But this last fall, I went out to my garden and I put, I've got, my pots are ready. I got all my garden soil and I'm ready to go. Am am I doing anything wrong? 
Wait, wait, wait. By staging your, you filled them with soil yep. in the fall? Yep. Oh, well. you, you listened to our <laughs> fall podcast on prep. That's what um, you did. So PJ, in one of our fall episodes, was talking about how do you set your, your gardens up for the next year. You do all your um, nutrient levels and your fertilization in the fall. Mm-hmm. So that it's set in because then the plant has it going into the next season after it comes out of dormancy. But is there a difference between using my bed soil and what I'm using in my seed starters? Oh, yes. So yes. sterility. Is, yes. Yes. So it, I, if you were doing that, if you were going to start seeds in a container that had wintered outside that was full of soil, you're really going to be prone to bacterial and fungal infections. Just and possibly, hands down. And possibly critters that have um, eggs that have overwintered mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And lots, you know, centipedes are my favorite to oh, find. Um, I think they're kind of cute. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. So you're prone to all that. The When you buy a seed, a bag of seed starting mix, it is sterile. It has been processed in such a way that when they sealed that package, it, they can guarantee there's pretty much no bugs in there. So I always recommend using fresh on a seed. I would now, agree. transplanting into something like a taking a four inch petunia, for instance, into that pot, like that petunia is resilient enough to all those things already. You're probably really it's, safe. It's already established. Yeah. You don't need yep. to always be sterile. But in the seed starting stage, when you're putting a humidity dome on something and having 100% humidity, all of our pathogens love that. Fungus loves that. Bacteria Crit- loves bugs that. Love bugs that. love that. So you're just, it's, you've kind of got to control that variable, right? Yep. You really want to be sterile, I think, at the seed So yeah, stage. any seed starter mix, any germination mix is going to be fine yep. uh, in that, in that regards to get that going. And I might even, you know, kind of what we do here, we don't, uh, we have a, a certain mix for our seedlings as well. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, which is very porous and it allows the growth of the, of the, uh, yeah, the, the roots rooting. to, uh, <laughs> get much there. faster. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and then what I would recommend as well, uh, maybe put a little vermiculite over your yes. seed starter cups yes. and this will help keep the moisture in your soil. And this okay. is, this is an easy. What's vermiculite? Go ahead. Vermiculite is a flaked rock. That it's, a, it's a form of mica. Rocks. Yeah, yeah, mica, yeah, right? it just, it's a form of mica. Yep. Right? And it's been heat treated. It's I, been heat I treated. I call it popcorn Absolutely. rocks because yep. it is, they make popcorn out of It's mica. really cool to show kids like how it flakes apart. Yeah. It's really yep. messy. But it also, hold, it, it holds moisture. It helps keep your moisture levels. It protects the soil. It keeps pathogens yep. out. Like there's a lot of benefits to it. Yeah. And it'll actually help as well crack your seed coating. Exactly. If yes. it's sitting, say, so you have your soil level and then you have your seed sitting on top. It's got the proper amount of moisture and that has vermiculite on top. It'll help break the radial and begin the, the process of the growing. What's another important step I should be looking at if I'm a beginning gardener and let's say that I love hot peppers and I can't find the ghost peppers or whatever we it is at the, at the uh, local, at the local Small market. plug. We grow the um, ghosties. <laughs> but I planted them and nothing happened. Okay. Ooh. Is there anything that I need to be looking at on the packet that's going to give me any information about what I should be doing? I think you're pointing at the germination, right? I here. am pointing at well, the germination. Well, but specifically, I think the answer <clears throat> to your question only because I know this, temperature. So peppers yes. have to germinate at a much higher temperature than a lot of other plants. Yeah. So they... Our definition of cool germ temperature is 65 to 72. Mm -hmm. Our definition of warm germination temperature at the greenhouse in a professional professional environment, an actual germination chamber is 72 to 78. So if you can hit that 75 range for a pepper to 80, you're probably okay. But on those really high end ghost peppers with that very high Scoville, these are tropical plants. Mm-hmm. from the equator mm-hmm. kind of as an origin piece and i'm generalizing to a certain degree but they sometimes take 20 to 30 days yeah. right. and if you're gonna take the risk and go down this you need to educate yourself you need to know how to prevent mold you need to definitely make sure you have sterile seed starting you're not using old seed or old soil and um dirty plastic that could not that has right. possible pathogens yeah. hiding in the flakes on the side. I mean, these are microorganisms you cannot see with hu- naked human eye. Till they're a problem. Till till they're <laughs> yeah. prevalent and you've lost your entire crop. And yeah. at that point, you you have no backtrack. Right. 
you can't fix that after that. So, but if you've got really all of that, important. if you've done all of that research, you do. It. If you, you are, know, are so a, all if you are a hothead and you are a pepper king, I'm going to call you a pepper king because there's not a lot of pepper queens. I happen to be one of them, <laughs> but I'm a dragon. I can handle some heat, but not everybody's like that. No. And a lot of men I know that are like masculinity. I like spicy things. <laughs> yeah. Just We'll we'll get there. It's fine. Um, that's a totally different podcast. That's wildly yeah, inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, with your pepperheads, your hotheads, if you're really dedicated to this, there is a way to do it. And reach out to us on social media. Yep. We'll 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 give you some pointers or at least some spots to start. And Tammy's gonna look at me awkwardly through the window, and I'm <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So we have a window that shoots shoots straight into our sales office. And so I, we get to watch the whole office, and they get to watch us as we film this. So every once in a while, we'll just be like, squirrel. Yep. Okay, you're so, a squirrel. I am a squirrel. By you the way. <laughs> so what is the importance, because you mentioned it, and, and what I was trying to lead to is the germ rate. What is the importance of a germ rate? I mean, it's important to us, too. It's you know, important for anyone at. selling seed because it kind of <clears throat> guarantees their product. <clears throat> but de- depending on vegetables, some vegetables have notoriously low germination rates uh rosemary is one of them mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. peppers probably are up on that list yes. too where you're probably only getting let's just say seven out of ten seeds instead of yeah it was i would av- av- i would average right. to 70 percent. and your tomatoes i mean they're they're much higher i i think they're every, 85 to 90 percent yeah every time i've done seed tomatoes i get a hundred percent just across so the if board. i've got the rosemary since you brought it up if mm-hmm. i'm going to grow rosemary to start and it's got a 72% germ rate. And I've got enough pots. I want to do 20 plants. Yeah. So account for your losses. I'm not going to do the math. Yeah. <laughs> but so I, I, would might... plant, I would plant 30 to 40 yeah. and yeah. double them up as double needed. Seed. Yeah. And take 70% yep. of that because total would... number. And yeah. So like from a mathematics Seeds standpoint with a greenhouse, we are always factoring for 95% germination or better. So right. if I've got a seed pack that's 70%, and it's brand new seed. I'm still going to probably do a seed and a half per cell on basic average. But say it's delphinium, right? So I'm working with perennial seed, which doesn't hold very well. And it needs the couple. So delphinium seed is something that does not hold well. It, I'm going to double seed it no matter what, even if it's a 95% germ. Because I don't know that I can trust the percentage of germination on that. So I'm, we're always going to factor for that. But like something like hollyhocks, right? Everybody loves a beautiful hollyhock. I will tell you right now, they suck to start in the greenhouse. They are a bitch to get to germinate. Now, you just self-germinate in your yard. Hollyhocks are everywhere. They grow beautifully. Mm -hmm. Uh, We were talking about sunflowers the other day. People are like, oh, I started my sunflowers in March in my house. It's April, and they're like hitting the couch. What do I do? (laughs) Don't plant them inside. So there are certain seeds. Don't start them inside. Sunflowers, what did you say? Uh, throw them in the yard and forget about it. Same them. as hollyhocks. Yeah. I yeah. mean, just throw that seed yeah. out there. There's, you know, there's, and that's, I think you were pointing to that in the beginning is choose your seed wisely. There are, there are crops that just don't need to be started in right. course. Exactly. And I think, have we mentioned any vegetables crops yet? So no, we just talked about what vegetables would you not start inside? Let's start there. Spinach I, for one. Um, I would, I would start spinach cause I do, I do spinach. So yeah. it's I, I have had great success with spinach really early just because mm. it's so cold tolerant. I don't think yes. it's worth starting indoors. Well, but and, I'm also on the yeah. side of lazy seed gardening yeah. to myself. I like that. But I'm lazy seed. I'm lazy a lot of things. A lot of your um, melons, uh, yeah. you don't necessarily need to start Any vine inside. Crop. I would yeah. say vine crop, just you pop the seed Cucumber, in outside. Cucumber, pumpkin, melons, any Squash. of that. Right. After your transplant shock of six weeks, it's going to be better to just put the seed in the ground. Right. Yeah. Um, I would not do any of your root crops inside. You don't need your beets inside. No carrots. You don't need your carrots. Never pre-plant a carrot. Don't do onions. Um, That's just, it's not necessary. I don't know. I think onions are okay indoors, but some, I some, see where you're at. Yeah, maybe yeah. you're bunching onions and things like That's that. What I don't I was know about you know, your onions, chives, not, things like yeah. that, that. Your shallots be, is yeah, the yeah. one I would think of if particular. Yeah, and, I love and shallots. We're kind of keying in here on vegetables, but there's annuals that we can also start indoors. There's there's perennials you can start indoors. So yeah. don't limit yourself to just looking at at vegetable gardens. You know, a lot of people want a color garden. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, gosh, I there's this one house I drive by on Hayburn all the time, just down from my place, that has beautiful zinnias on just like 
It's like the blazing hot surface of the sun spot right in between the neighbor's driveway and their driveway. And they've just got these beautiful zinnias all the time. They have just got to throw seeds out there. There's yeah. no way they're paying for that amount of zinnias no. to plant there. They're just throwing seed packets. Yeah. yeah. They must I mean, be stay fairs. <laughs> yes, they totally are stay fairs. Absolutely. Um, There's a uh, customer that we, we talk about often uh, with Garden Answer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was YouTube watching channel. Go I check was her watching out. her YouTube channel before we came in here. And uh, an episode that she had on a podcast or on one of her videos, uh, it's been about a year ago now, is all about she asked viewers to to send in their home where they grow their, their seeds. And it's about 35 minutes, but it'll give you so many ideas. And she gets so excited looking at them. It's, 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 I'm excited now to get going, you know. So oh, good. That'll help for our next episode. Yeah. We're covered in snow outside, yeah. but we can be excited about growing. Oh, <laughs> I am stoked that it snowed the last two days. I know. I am so. too. I, yeah. Sorry, but snow. I didn't mean if, that. If you get your children. <laughs> yeah, don't run it off. It just got here. <laughs> if you get your children involved early on, they will also become gardeners because this is a fun uh, project that can be done really for the whole family. Well, and if you've and got that extra want, room or the basement. If her favorite color is purple and you yep. can't eat her to get a green bean and she's four, if she's suddenly Johnny the Beanstalk and growing her own purple green beans, she might eat them. Yeah. She might be a little more healthy. That's another crop I wouldn't start indoors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Beans so, and peas. Beans and I don't peas think outside. It's worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So tomatoes are an easy start indoors. Um, I do recommend for folks, and Adam and I do have a difference of opinion on this, but he has, makes really good points. I suggest a heat mat underneath. Absolutely. But sometimes that's going to, as Adam pointed out to me, it's going to take your roots down and mat them. So if you're going to do that, having individual containers, I think is an important piece. And also monitoring your roots. And because, your moisture. And your moisture. Because if it suddenly becomes matted and you can't get it out of the pot without destroying the root integrity, then you've just wasted several weeks. Of and, your time and I and think energy. another thing that, that uh, Adam has mentioned is, okay, so when we're getting to that second true leaf the mm. true leaf of the plants this is when i'm going to remove the dome altogether yep. okay i'm not keeping it on there until such a point that it's there once you've got the true leaves then go ahead and all of your uh for all of your soil yeah is going to be it'll have a charge okay so it's, it's going to help those roots get established once you get the second the true leaf go ahead and apply a liquid fertilizer just to help that along before you Transplanted and a few weeks later. We have to legally tell you at this time to follow the label instructions. Absolutely. Exactly. Do not say, oh, more will be better. More don't, is never better. <laughs> do not. If you're indoors, I recommend going slightly less than the manufacturer's label. Yeah. To we be are, safe. We yeah. are legally obligated to state that in any recommendation. So. And then as far as okay. watering, do you think it's best watering from the top? or getting the uh, trays that will hold the water and watering the bottom of the trays? Absolutely. Uh, the latter. Um, I think if you can bottom water, you know, which means your, your seed pack or whatever has holes in the bottom, it's sitting in something watertight and you fill up that watertight vessel with water, set your container in that. That is always, I think there might be a couple of exceptions, but that is mostly ideal. Um, do you want to have a root development before you go that way just so that the roots are far enough down absolutely, to pull the water up? Because like I said, if if you're at the point of still having your humidity cover on top, there's really not any necessity to be right. watering yet. Right. And when you're getting to the point of taking that dome off or cover off, you certainly have roots. If yeah. there's greens up above, you have roots unless, uh, in fact, in the case of the heat mat, you cooked off your roots, which I've seen too. Yeah, so that's true. So what is your preference uh, soil? Uh, and there's a lot of different uh, applications here on how you can start your seeds, okay? Yeah. Uh, you've got your soil. You've got seed pods. You've got, you know, uh, like Oasis Cubes. What is your preference? Oasis Cubes? Mm -hmm. What are these? It's Those a, are like little substrate. styrofoam substrate cubes. It's not, it's not soil. And you oh, put your seed right okay. in there. It's not soil. You okay. grow it up, and then you transplant that whole thing into the ground. I see. So it's like a little preform plug that you yeah, just basically. pop your seed into. Yeah. Okay, go. what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's your preference? What's your preference? Uh, Obviously, you didn't know about Oasis. <clears throat> so that is probably my, not on the list. I'll, I guess I'll just tell you, but my preference is actually I use open flats. Um, I don't use anything celled because it dries out too quickly at the true leaf stage for me. 
So I use open flats and I time my transplant pretty carefully because as you know, in an open flat, you get root entanglement between plants. So you've got to separate those at the right time. So they're not matted together or whatever, but lettuces, especially, um, not so much tomatoes. I'll do those in kind of celled flats. Um, and usually tomatoes, I just grow them in a four inch cup. Because I don't like to transplant them more than I have to. Yeah, you less is better. But case. yeah, so so let it leaf greens. I would say uh, kale, all of it. Um, it's really good in an open flat because you don't really have to separate them. You can kind of take little right. chunks and get several right. plants at once and outplant those. Um, I don't know. I I think my preferences are kind of based on the crop. But I do my onions in an open flat. Um, what else do I do? It's been that that technique has been around for years. It's tried and proved. Tried. I brought a list of vegetables you know, so. to refresh my memory. Yeah. There you so go. With the another Good. thing that uh, we Radishes. should be doing is keeping notes. Yes. Okay. So, so if you're going to do this year after year, what is your experience on pepper? Uh, how long it took? The varietals. Take those notes. You've got a, a you know, pen and paper right there. Take it right there as you go. Hey, on day three, I saw this. On day five, I saw this. Yeah. And most importantly, label your, label your vegetables everything. so that you know. Two you know, labels <laughs> for everything, actually, because one of them will get pulled out by a child or yeah, a cat yeah. or a squirrel or <laughs> will get sun faded. You know, two labels. I remember all of these things. You can <laughs> even labels. take plastic spoons and a Sharpie. It'll eventually fall off or, I mean, rub off, but whatever yeah i'm not cheapo i'm like popsicle sticks sticks. and i'm fine the micro tip sharpie on a popsicle stick two of them you can't go wrong (laughs) wrong. you don't have to overthink it i mean hell you want to paint rocks and say radish go ahead you can you can do that but if i want to really go on the cheap okay so i bought the soil and uh, i didn't want to buy any of the pots can i use the pots that i bought at moss greenhouses last year yeah clean them out uh, bleach them and a triple rinse and rinse is the important dry. part there. Triple rinse, 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 rinse. Triple rinse. rinse. Yeah, because there's a chemistry half, It's a half life yeah. thing, so yeah. you don't want the chemicals. But um, yeah, that's kind of the basics. Mm-hmm. Right. And that is what I use at home is is literally all of my moss because I've never thrown away a moss cup I've ever planted. <laughs> I have a pallet full of moss cups. So infinite supply. So we need supply. to send the truck out operations manager over there in the corner and pick up from uh, no. Adam's place. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's He's spider, like, no, I'm still using it's it. It's spider infested, and yeah. it's quite the journey to remove them from the pallet every time I wake up. Yeah, so with that, um, start getting excited about seed catalogs. I mean, any yep. any true gardener kind of nerds out on that stuff. Um, and I always uh, make this recommendation. If you've li- been listening to me for a while, I always say this. Pick a vegetable you haven't grown before and try it this year. Mm. I also always pick something I don't like and I grow it myself to see if I can teach myself <laughs> to like it. Again, I still can report that eggplant is worthless and red bell peppers suck. So that's totally my personal agree. opinion. <laughs> They're garbage. <laughs> like you can't put enough. By the way, on. I don't recommend starting peppers indoors. I don't either. I recommend everything just else we've talked peppers. about is great. But peppers, if you're a diehard, just go buy them. If you're just a diehard, be my guest. If <laughs> you really want us to grow a certain kind of pepper, reach out to us on our social media. And if you don't get a response, just keep bugging us. Um, we just are busy growing your plants in a greenhouse. And our pepper selection is the business. Yep. It is. Like I've, we really tuned that in. And we've got a solid pepper yep. selection. I don't know why you'd need another pepper. And if you guys are if buying you on want a sweet bougie one, I might not have it. But if it's hot, you can guarantee I got that pepper. Yeah. If you're buying online, do it now. Don't wait because it may it, not be available. January is later. the time. Okay. Yeah. So. And also, I want to say one more thing old seed. If you've got old seed packets, if they're a year old. Give it a try, but put two seeds per cell. Maybe three. Maybe three, depending on what it is. But if it is older than that, If discard. you didn't take care of that seed packet discard. and you just put it in the garage, throw it out and start discard. over. Discard. Yep. Seed does not hold viability. It's not how it works. It is a living, breathing organism that can only last so long. And each seed has a different life length of life yes but we're going to talk about that in another podcast yes we are there's like a thousand year old seed that was recovered okay that's a completely different conversation (laughs) but different podcast from a retail (laughs) standpoint 
Because when you get a new package, it might still be a year too old and there's still a viability issue, but you're never going to know that as a home gardener. Yeah. So, and you can't, I mean, you could call DMB back and have your little, it didn't germinate. It's like, it, it's, it's not a battle you want to fight. We live in that seed world. So. I would encourage our listeners, if they're going to start seeds from home here in about four to six weeks, uh, go ahead and send us your pictures, uh, submit them on our website. And uh, or on, on, our on, Facebook, on our Facebook, on our Facebook. and uh, let us see what you're doing, and yeah. that you heard about it here on our on our podcast, and it got you excited. Uh, we'd love to see those pictures. Yeah. All right, so your homework is pick the plant that you're going to grow that you may have never grown, or you don't like, and you want to try, or get your children to help you in the garden. Those would be my two homework assignments. Um, if you've liked this episode or any of our past episodes, please listen to us on any of your favored streaming platforms. Is probably the way I need to say that, right, producer? I eventually am going to get this down. which ones are we on? We are on Spotify. <laughs> we are on Apple Podcast. Did I say it correctly? I'm anti-Apple. Really? Sorry. Um, and we're on YouTube. Um, I'm sure you can find us on Stitcher and all of the above as well. Um, we are on anywhere you stream podcast. We, and our Facebook page. And our Facebook page. We have merged the Bloom and Full Color back into the Moss Greenhouse's Facebook page so you can find everything in one place. And then... This is going to evolve as we go. We might even start doing live in the greenhouse during the season and submitting questions on a monthly basis. So we're going to have fun with this. Um, the next episode we are, are heading into filming is Gardening Goals for 2024. And I am actually going to let the boys run this one without Ooh. me. So it's going to be a testosterone-filled corner, maybe. <laughs> Two out of three. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three. <laughs> Fair. Uh, and with that, so uh, please share this and like us. And if you have any requests for episode types um, or topics, we would love to hear it. So do not be bashful. And with that, we invite you to go live life in full color because plain is pretty boring. Thank you very much, guys, for listening and watching. Cheers. Cheers.